Hello, praying all is well, giving God the praise and glory for all that he has done and all that he will do. Amen. Today's topic is God's grace and mercy. God's grace and mercy. I don't know about y'all, but I can use a little more grace and a little more mercy to help me along on this journey. Amen. But before I get into this word, allow me to pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for this message. Thank you for the grace and mercy that you have bestowed upon us. But Lord God, I ask that you help us to be as gracious and merciful as you are to others that surround us, Lord God, so that we may be examples of your love and kindness each and every day. May we prove that you live within us, Lord God. Help us to approach your throne, Lord God, with confidence, knowing that you will deliver, knowing that you will heal and answer the request of our lips. And so, Lord God, I bind up the hand of Satan, offer our understanding, Lord God, and offer our life so that we can be all that you are calling us to be and say all that you are calling us to say. So remove all fear, all doubt, Lord God and overthinking in Jesus name. So Lord God, just take your place in this moment. Place your words in my mouth and not my own in Jesus name. I decree and declare this done. You all, uh, let me tell y'all something. God see everything and he know everything. And so therefore we're going to have to start being careful of the things that not, not careful. Just make sure you live in the life that God wants you to live. Amen. Stop doing things that's contrary to God's word. On Saturday, I started studying in the book of Jonah. And I was taking my time with it because the Lord had a mouthful to say amen. And so I pray that I'm able to give it to y'all the way the Lord gave it to me. So I'm in Jonah 1 and I'm going to start reading it verse 1. It says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amadi, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. So I want to let you know that you're not being slick about nothing that you're doing. God see everything. Even he know our thoughts. Amen. So guess what? Whatever you're doing, God see it and he displeased with it. Amen. And I'm going to keep reading. It says, but Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with him from Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea and there was a mighty tempest on the sea so that the ship was about to be broken up. Let me tell you something, y'all. It's things that we do in our life that God will send a storm to change us or to get us to do what it is that he want us to do. And also, I want to let you know your no to God affects the people around you and your yes to God affects the people around you. You know, J.K. and Carson, everything attached to me wins. Everything attached to you wins, but also everything attached to you can fail when you don't do what the Lord is calling you to do. Amen. So you're going to have to be mindful of yourself and mindful of the things that God is telling you to do. Mindful of the people that's connected to you. Stop being selfish and think about others as well as yourself. Amen. And do what it is that God has called you to do. Don't run away from God. Sometimes our storms can come in our life life to help make us better and also storms come in our life because of the people we have in our life amen just like these people allowed jonah to get on this ship yeah that storm that was raging up against them wasn't even a storm this wasn't even a fight it was all because of jonah right so you're gonna have to start looking around and paying attention to the people that's in your life and that's probably why you're going through what you're going through because god needs their attention amen i remember this one time my sister and her husband was going through some things and I told her, don't let him back on your ship. That's why she was going through most of what she was going through. She allowed him to be on her ship when he wasn't supposed to be. He the one was causing all the raging and the storms that they was going through. Amen. So therefore, sometimes it can be those who are close to us that causes us to go through storm. So start paying attention to your loved ones. Amen. And tell them when they were, uh, tell them when they are wrong for doing so. Stop uh, being lenient on our kin people and those who are close to us just because they, you know, we love them and stuff like that is, is wise if you tell them the truth. Amen. So guess what? The storm that you're going through might not even be your own, but also it could be because of your disobedience. So you just gonna have to evaluate with your life right now and see why did God send this storm and I can guarantee you if he sent it because of your disobedience he only want to purge that out of you that disobedience out of you so you can receive what he have prepared for you amen so therefore check yourself slow down check yourself I got some more for you I'm gonna go on it says I'm going to skip down to verse 10. It says, Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, Why have you done this? For men knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord because he told them, Be honest. Whatever you're going through, let me tell you something. If you meet a person and you want to date them or something, 
be honest with them so they can be able to be willing to accept what it is that you're bringing to the table versus you forcing it on them. Amen. Be honest with the people that's around you. Be honest with people that's in your life and also expect them to be honest. Make sure they are honest people that you're dealing with. Amen. It says, then they said to him, what shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing more temptuous. And he said to them, pick up, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. People be knowing when they wrong. Amen. And so you just gonna have to make sure you're dealing with some very honest people in Jesus name. And whatever it is that God is telling you to do, make sure you being honest with them and being honest with yourself. Amen. So the storm can cease in Jesus name. And so I'm gonna skip down to verse 17. It says, now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. First of all, most people think that the Lord sent that fish to swallow Jonah up to kill him or whatever. But why couldn't he just let Jonah drown? That fish was sent to save Jonah's life because God already knew that Jonah was suicidal. Jonah didn't mind dying, especially not to give these people a word that he knew that the Lord was going to forgive. Jonah didn't even want no parts of it, right? And so the Lord sent that fish to save Jonah's life. And let me tell you something. Jonah could have been out there uh bellies fit that fish belly before even three days because he if he had a turn from his wicked ways and stopped running from god and got in alignment with god and agreed with god and repented beforehand he could have been out that fish within that first day because it wasn't until jonah agreed with god and aligned his heart up with what god was saying and repented for what he done then the lord spoke to the fish and told him to vomit jonah up but let me tell you something that the lord said said Jonah was being so stubborn that he didn't even want to do it. So whatever it is in your life that you're being stubborn about, you don't want to do, uh, you're going to have to do it. Amen. So that God can free you for God can release you and free you up into the things that you really uh, want him to do in your life. Amen. So God is just saying, don't be stubborn. Do not be stubborn. Thus says the Lord. And he led me to scripture. Um, I'm going to go to first Samuel 15, 23 says, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as the iniquity and idolatry because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He has rejected you from being king. So whatever it is that you're doing in this life, whatever God got you doing, you don't want to be demoted. So you're going to have to learn to listen to God. Stop being stubborn, right? And so Jonah, he was still being stubborn until stuff got the wrapping around his head. His stuff started happening. Some uh, other stuff started happening. So if you don't want to give up your position or where you at, you're going to have to stop being stubborn, amen, and say what God is telling you to say and go what God's telling you to go, no matter who it is. Is, you still gonna have to say what God is telling you to say no matter how close they is to you you'll be a good friend if you really told the truth to them and a lot of times let me tell you something people don't like being transparent because they don't want people to know their failures they don't want people to know that they did that same sin that, that the other person is doing they want to seem like they better than somebody else like they never did no wrong but see that's why God can't use you no further than what he's using you because you don't like to be honest you don't like to tell the truth you don't like to be transparent but God need for you to open up and be truthful because how else are you going to help someone get the deliverance they need if you don't if you didn't have that same struggle that same tussle amen so go ahead and be honest with the person and let them know you did it too and that's how you know it's hard to come out right but they need to repent and be reconciled back with god because god's grace and mercy is the top priority here amen it's all about jesus it's not about us so the moment you decided to be stubborn you was you withheld information from somebody it was about you then it's not about god you trying to protect your um um reputation you trying to protect yourself in that moment when you don't be honest about it amen and so i'm gonna drop down to 210 and it says so the lord spoke to the fish and it vomited jonah up onto the dry land and so until you get um in alignment with what god wants you to do until you get in alignment and uh, repent for what you did guess what you're gonna stay in the wet fish's belly amen you're gonna stay in the fish who all in the fish belly i can say i think i'm in the fish's belly right now because i my i was telling god the other night i was crying and talking to god on saturday on Saturday night, 
Because after I read this, I was like, okay, God, what am I running from? What am I doing that's not pleasing you? So I started evaluating myself, right? And so I started thinking, it ain't people that I'm around because me and my family barely talk, right? We barely reach out to each other. And so it ain't no tough or real, a lot of communication going on right there. So I'm just like, okay, it's not my family. And then the only places I go besides home is to the grocery store or to church. So I was like, well, God, am I at the wrong church? I started asking God, well, I'm at the, at the wrong church because I know you just told me to stay at that church. And I know you just told me to join that choir. I know you ain't telling me to leave. So what's the matter? What's going wrong? And I told God on Saturday, I said, God, make a way for my bishop to be preaching. And if my bishop is preaching, allow him to say the color purple. If he don't say the color purple, allow him to wear the color purple so that I can know that I'm in the right place and I'm doing what you're telling me to do. I'm telling y'all, my bishop preached on Sunday and my bishop wore the color purple. His uh gown came open, his robe came open, I mean, and he had on a purple shirt. I was like, okay, and not only that, that he had his little sweat uh towel, it was purple too. I said, look at God showing out. And I was like, if God didn't answer that little prayer and it happened the very next day, God didn't answer every other prayer that I have prayed to him, amen. So I just want to let you know that if you feel like you in the well fish's belly at the moment, just know that God want, want you to do more of what he's calling you to do amen the prayers is already answered you just got to line up and obey god i don't know if he's been telling you to say something i don't know if god been telling you to do something but whatever it is it just needs to get done let me tell you something god is sick and tired of us telling him that god if you do this we'll do this you, he done gave you two or three different times to do that. You haven't held up your end of the deal yet. He done did what he told you he was going to do, but you haven't. So now God don't trust you no more because you've been doing a little line. So you're going to have to repent for lying for the last time you told God you was going to do what you was going to do and you didn't do it. So what are you being stubborn about? What haven't you done that you told God you was going to do and you know you need to do it? So evaluate yourself and see what it is that you need to get done and say whatever it is that God is expecting you to say in Jesus' name. And so I'm going to move on. I'm in Jonathan three and i'm gonna start reading at verse one it says now the word of the lord came to jonah a second time saying let me tell you something god is not like man god will continue to tell you what it is that you need to do amen so guess what you're gonna have to start listening and looking for that thank you holy spirit you're gonna have to start looking for the things that you're asking god for because if i hadn't have been looking at uh and paying attention to my bishop and really listening to what he was saying i wouldn't have seen his shirt being purple on sunday and mind you we wear black and white on first sundays and he did not wear black and white. So therefore, he obeyed the voice of the Lord. And if I, I had not have been paying attention and looking for the color purple, I would have missed it. So God is saying, if you're not looking for the things that you're asking him for, if you're not looking for the things that he are t is speaking to you, you're going to miss it. Amen. So God is saying, make sure you paying attention. Be alert. Amen. And Jesus saying, let me go ahead and read. It says, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time saying, arise and go to Nineveh, that great city and preach preach it the message that i tell you so let me tell you something whatever god is telling you to say you're gonna have to say it. whatever god is telling you to do you're gonna have to do it no matter who they are whether you feel like they ain't gonna listen to you if they're hard-headed if they stubborn whatever it is you're gonna have to preach the word of god whatever he told you amen to your sister brother cousin best friend homeboy you're gonna have to tell it the way god told you to tell it in jesus name i'm gonna keep going it says so jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three days journey in extent. And Jonah began to enter into the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried and out and said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And it says that, so the people of Nineveh, Nineveh believed God, proclaimed their fast and put sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. Let me tell you something. When God brings forth a word, whether it's good or bad, you better believe it, amen, because it's going to get done. Just like Nineveh, they believe. That's what caused them to turn from their wicked ways, amen. So if you don't think fat meat greasy, you keep going down the same road that you're going down and you're going to see that God is not playing. You're going to see that he see you and that you're not being slick, amen. And something that God pointed out to me, 
He said that we're going to have to stop assuming that people know better than what they're doing. It don't matter their age. It don't matter their title. It don't matter their religion. Stop assuming that people know better because they don't. Because if Nineveh had a knew better, they wouldn't have been doing wrong in the first place. That's what the Lord showed me. And he said, there's a lot of times that we assume that people know better and we won't say what he's telling us to say because we figure that they know better, right? But God said, stop assuming it because sometimes even though we do know better, we need a reminder. Be that reminder to somebody amen that this is wrong god is unpleased with it and it's time for you to repent and come out step out of your wickedness amen let me tell you uh what the lord was showing me um how can i put this say for instance um you shoot at somebody and a person who got a gun and they ain't never been in no trouble before they quick to pull a trigger or probably quick to pull a gun on somebody not realizing the consequences behind that trigger pull right they either kill somebody or get shot themselves they're gonna mess up their record and what else could come behind it right it, it ain't no telling what kind of chaos come behind you pulling a gun on somebody so therefore that person didn't know any better right so god is just saying you know anytime that you know better you'll do better amen and then in the bible i'm gonna just use uh adultery for example because the bible says that a man who commits adultery lacks understanding so whatever it is that you're doing that you don't read in the word of god that you're not supposed to do and you do it anyway you lacks understanding in it you devoid of understanding so therefore that person do not know any better warn them amen tell them what god is telling you to say i don't care about your homeboy stop being lenient on them stop being lenient on your homegirls if you want to see them do better tell them amen so they can do better in jesus name remind them it's okay to drop a seed in somebody's spirit and god will make it grow god is the one that brings forth the deliverance all he wants you to do is just drop that seed plant that seed because i got a sister and she don't like going around preaching. She don't want to feel like she's going around telling people what to do and stuff like that. So I was telling her, you know, just drop that seed. Anytime I go around my family members and stuff like that, especially if it's something that the Lord delivered me from, I know he can deliver them. Say, for instance, I used to smoke or whatever. And I see one of my siblings smoking. I'd be like, man, I know your lungs hurt because mine used to hurt or whatever. And just think about how you drive behind people who smoke. And then you see all of that smoke coming out their car. That is so embarrassing. And then I would just be like, you know, you're putting something in your lungs you know anytime you damage your lungs it's irreversible so you probably want to quit smoking or whatever and i just drop a seed like that on somebody instead of versus not saying nothing at all so you're gonna have to start opening up your mouth and saying something amen and let them know in the process of telling them that that they can be reconciled back to god if they just repent and turn to him amen so it's okay to tell people that they're doing wrong. Just make sure you reconcile them back to God, that God forgives them, that nothing that they ever can do or say will separate us from the love of God. But what they're doing is still wrong, that they need to come out. Amen. They need to repent for what it is that they're doing. In Jesus' name. Make sure you tell them that in Jesus' name. And then I'm going to go down further. Uh, I'm still in three, and I'm going to go down to verse 10. It says, Then God saw their works that they turned from their evil way and God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them and he did not do it. So therefore, all you have to do is repent in the things that God had planned to do to you. His wrath, bring his wrath upon you. Guess what? He won't because you repented. You sorrow. You had godly sorrow for the things that you're doing. That means you stopped. That means you came out and God will reconcile you back to him. Amen. So therefore, you're going to have to start paying attention to what the people is saying and change. Anytime somebody tell me something something whether it's directly or indirectly i make the adjustments to my life because they ain't doing nothing but helping me be better helping me be a better person helping me be who god called me to be god just trying to make sure will you obey me no matter who it come from it doesn't matter to the person who offended me i'm still listening i'm gonna still move forward and i'm gonna pray for my um the people who's over me and stuff like that. So they can't tell me exactly what it is that God is saying. If you go in the church and you're not receiving no word from God or you feel like God ain't talking to you, that's because you're not praying for your uh, leadership. So therefore, you're going to start, you're going to have to start praying for them, amen, and covering them. 
in Jesus name. And I'm going to keep reading. And it says, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly and he became angry. So he prayed to the Lord and said, our Lord was not this what I said when I was still in my country. Therefore, I fled previously to Tarshish for I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in love and kindness who relents from destruction who relents from doing harm. So therefore you all just know that God do not want to send a storm in order for get to get in order to get you to change. God wants you living your best life, but he wants you to live a righteous life as well. Amen. God is so merciful and he's so gracious and we have to show that same grace and that same mercy to one another. Amen. So when you see a brother and sister in Christ doing something they're not supposed to, say something about it. Amen. But also be graceful towards them and merciful towards them. Amen. And reconcile them. Help them get back in the face of God like they're supposed to be in Jesus name. Don't count them out. The Lord uh, is reminding me of a dream that I had on last night. Matter of fact, I had this dream on Saturday. No, Friday. I had the dream on Friday. And in a dream, it was a whole bunch of people. It looked like a jail and it looked like a school at the same time. But on the outside, it had the school vibes, right? And everybody out there. And so they getting into it. Everybody shoving and playing and stuff like that. But these two guys got serious. And this one guy pulled out an Uzi and he just started spraying. So everybody took out running. I ran in the inside and I was praying and hoping that he didn't come in the inside and get us. But I ran in the bathroom and ran in the bathroom stall. But the woman called me and she said, here, I already got your suit ready. It was some orange suits and it was a white suit. That's when it looked like it went to prison. But these suits had these numbers on. She said, I already had a suit for you. I just need you to take this suit and take this number so that we can get a head count. I'm going to tell you something. When Anytime that a gun and bullets and stuff is involved, somebody is doing some real live slandering, right? So you cannot be worried about what people are saying about you. You cannot worry about what people are saying behind your back or either, you know, uh, you know, talking about you and stuff like that. You can't worry about that. Let me tell you something. You are protected, thus says the Lord. So let them keep talking. Amen. Even if you have done something you wasn't supposed to do, let them keep talking because God said you're protected and God said he already have a plan for you. Amen. In Jesus name. So whatever it is that you've done wrong, just know that God forgives you and he loves you. It's time for you to turn back to him, though. No matter if people talking about you or not. Oh, well, they talking about Jesus. They talked about me. I told y'all I done committed every sin nearly in the Bible and probably didn't spend the block on it twice. But at the same time, I'm not afraid to tell my testimonies because I know it's other people that's battling with those same things that I did. And so therefore, tell the testimony how it's supposed to be told. And stop withholding information from those who need deliverance. Because that's how they're going to get it. When they see that you done struggled the same way they struggle, Okay, God done brought them out here. Bring me out. God understand this. In Jesus' name. Stop withholding information. Amen. And be help to one another as God has called you to be. In the mighty name of Jesus. And then I had another dream, y'all. That uh, on last night. That um, we was like in this forest. But it was like kind of housey like forest housey like thing but we was out camping somewhere and um it was this one person who had sin but everybody had did the same sin everybody committed the same sin but when this one person committed sin they, they gonna place that person in the middle of everybody everybody talking bad about oh you sin convicting them right but then the homeboy who committed the real sin that was close to everybody else, you know, they knew him for a long time. They wasn't calling them out on their sin. But God is saying, you're going to have to call out your homeboy too. You're going to have to call out your homegirl too. Stop just calling out people that not close to you or you really don't know like that. Call out everybody because you're not doing your job the way that you're supposed to. And if people is just calling out your sin and not everybody else is because they're close to them, we're we not going to pay them no attention. God got them. Amen. But I'm going to tell you something. You got to call out everybody, not just some, just because they're close to you in Jesus' name. And then in that same dream, like we went to the water and reached our hand down in some water or whatever. But these leeches end up getting up on my arm. And I was about to be afraid. But God said, in the spirit, he said, in my dream, he said, remember who blood is running through your veins. And when I remembered who blood run through my veins, I said, Jesus, as soon as I said, Jesus, them leeches start falling off. So you don't have to worry about people being and trying to be connected to you for the wrong reasons or trying to hold you down or trying to suck life up out of you guess what god said when you remember 
who blood is running through your veins, all of that will fall off. Amen. You got to have confidence in this season and what God is doing in your life and who God is in your life. Amen. Be confident. Say the name of Jesus for everything. When you feel fearful, call on the name of Jesus. When people is coming up against you with they, your name in their mouth, talking about you uh, bad, say the name of Jesus. When you feeling tempted, say the name of Jesus. When you feeling uh, the spirit of disobedience, call on the name of Jesus because can't nothing overtake you. You are an overcomer. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are an overcomer, thus says the Lord. And all of us has been tempted in some type of way, done falling short in this life in some type of way. Amen. We done all been foolish. We done all did stupid things. It's not going to start with you. Amen. In Jesus name, he led me to Psalms 116 verse six. And it says, the Lord watches over the foolish. When I was helpless, he saved me. So just like God saved me out of my wickedness, out of my storms, out of my shortcomings, guess what? He can save you too, and he will, amen. And so you just gonna have to trust God, amen. And then he led me to uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 11. And it says, when I was a th child... Hold on, let me go to it first. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. So therefore, it's time for us to grow up. It's time for us to be mature in the body of Christ, amen, and stop being stubborn. Just because, you know, let me see. Oh, how can I put this? Just because you know you grown, just because you know that um, you can repent and get away with some things like that's very childish minded when you know that you're doing wrong. Amen. And so you just going to have to come out of whatever it is that you're doing and know you you wrong for what you're doing. Amen. And the information, uh, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me like it's information that he has given some of you all that you don't want to share with your brother, your cousin, your sisters or somebody like that because you don't want to see them prosper in something that you feel like you failed at or you don't want to see them move forward in whatever it is that they're doing but you have information that you know that they need and you won't give it to them so you gonna have to give them that information if not god just gonna keep causing a storm in your life or either he gonna send forth a storm and that is your warning right there to tell people what god is telling you to tell them and so i'm gonna go to first peter 2 2 and it says, therefore, lay aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and evil speaking. Stop talking about each other behind each other's back. Amen. Stop gossiping and repent in Jesus' name. And it says, as newborn babes desire the pure milk, <laughs> as newborn babes desire the pure milk um, of the word that you may grow thereby. So therefore, child receive their word so you can grow like i said earlier when somebody give me a word from god and tell me something that i'm doing wrong indirectly or directly i apply it to my life so that i can become better amen so that i'm growing in jesus name it says if indeed you have tasted that the lord has been gracious god has forgave you for some things he have graced at you amen so grace somebody else to figure that just because they of age they know better they can read they know the word of god or either they have a title grace them amen grace them in jesus name and so y'all uh it's it's a couple more things that i want to talk to y'all about the lord told me to make a video on this the other day but uh y'all i was kind of like i do a short uh, uh, another day and i really wasn't on it but i want to discuss with y'all because i know a lot of people have said that you know jesus is black jesus is white jesus is african or, or asian he's indian like we got a whole bunch of things going on and so many people think that just because they said jesus hair was as wool that's not what the word of god said it said it was white as wool but i want to bring clarity to you all so i'm gonna read it i'm in revelations one and i'm gonna start reading at verse 12 it says then i turned to see the voice that spoke with me and having turned i saw seven golden lampstands and in the midst of the seven lampstands one like the son of man clothed with a garment down to his feet and girded about the chest with a gold band. His head and his hair were white like wool and white as snow and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet 
were like fine brass and if refined in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. Let me tell you something, y'all. Um, sectarianism is not of God. It brings forth division. God also forgive racism. He forgive us for being prejudiced as well. What are y'all going to do? Knowing that Jesus probably can do this, but I'm pretty sure he wouldn't. But what if when we get to the heavens, up to the gate, and it's time for us to be judged right on judgment. What if he just transformed, say for instance, if you black and you prejudiced, you racist or whatever, he transformed into a white man. Are you not going to go into heaven because he white? And if you're white and you don't like black people, you're racist. If he turned himself to a black person, are you not going to go into heaven because he's black? Like, be for real. Be serious. That's so petty and childish, right? My brother was telling me how people done pulled up to uh, a church and just burned a whole bunch of Bibles when they um uh, told them that the that Jesus was a black man. They done burnt up all the Bibles. That's just plum foolishness, right? And so we want to get past it. It's time for us to grow. Amen. And so just know if you prejudice or racist, God forgives that too. Amen. So go boldly to the throne of grace and repent for being racist and ask God to help you with that weakness in Jesus name. And also another thing that I want to talk about, because the Lord pointed this out to me, 144,000 will enter into the um, heavens as first fruits, right? But everybody else will have me thinking before I read this years ago by myself and got a clear understanding that they had me thinking that it was going to only be 144,000 that made it into heaven. But I want to tell y'all that that's a lie and somebody wasn't reading with understanding. And so they spread it that and now God's children feel like ain't no way they have a fighting chance to get into heaven. Whether they try to change their life up or not, they feel like if they sin one time that they going to hell because only 144,000 is making it into heaven. But that is so untrue. That is so untrue. And so I want to read that to you. I'm in Revelation 14. And I'm going to read the entire thing. It's not that long. It says, I, well, no, I'm not. I'm going to read just a part to get us to where it says that God will receive the 144,000 as first fruits. And it says, then I looked and behold, a lamb standing on Mount, Mount Zion and with him 144,000 having his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters and like the voice of a loud thunder. And I heard the sound of the harp is playing the harp. They sang as it was a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders, and no one could learn that song except the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. These are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being first fruits to God and to the lamb. And in their mouth was no found no deceit, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And so therefore they are being taken as uh, first fruits, amen, meaning the beginning of something. They will go ahead of us is what that means. So we still got a fighting chance to get in, amen. So you need to repent for just living your life recklessly after hearing that lie somebody told you that only 144,000 was making it into heaven. Child, you still have a fighting chance, but you have to live your life according to how it pleases God, amen. According to how the word of God tell you to live, amen. And follow Jesus. That's all we have to do. Repent every day. Amen. And do your best to try to strive to live for Christ each and every day. Amen. And let me make sure that's all that the Lord wanted me to share with you all on today. So this is feel like I'm I'm missing something. And I don't know. I guess that I guess that's all. I guess that's all. I guess that's all I have for you all on today. Well, you all, I pray that this word added something to you on today. Make sure you are paying attention to those who are around you, who you are allowing in your life, making sure you're telling them where they are falling short at in the body of Christ. Amen. What they are doing wrong, wrong because just because they're of age, they have a title. They still, still need a reminder at times. Amen. So remind them where they are falling short. Remind them whether they are falling short, amen, and make sure that you remember that your yes affects those around you and your no also affects those who are around you, amen, and do what it is that God is calling you to do. Oh, another thing, I'm so sorry about this, y'all. I remember Jonah telling God to take his life two separate times, and he also tried to commit suicide himself. Just because things are not going your way, 
You're going to have to stop trying to commit suicide or thinking that the Lord is going to take your life. Get used to it not going your way because it's going to go God's way. Just like Jonah, he thought it was going to go his way, but it went God's way. God is not going to take your life. God said, even if it's something that you want to give up doing, God said he's not going to allow your purpose to die. So therefore, just line up with God will and do what it is that he has called you to do. Amen. And say what God is telling you to say, no matter who or what, just do it in Jesus name and stop uh, thinking that you're going to walk away from that purpose. But because God ain't going to let you slip, he ain't going to let you fall like that. Amen. Um, uh, yeah, that's all that I have for you all on today. Take this word back to God. Make sure it was for you. Amen. Or go get f further clarification on the things that I have been saying on today in Jesus name. And remember that the Lord loves you. And so do I. God bless.